Most people are increasingly aware of the dangers of depending on fossil fuels for our energy and embrace the idea of moving towards more renewable sources as fast as practical. Some remaining skeptics, therefore, find it useless to criticize green energy itself and instead focus their skepticism on the economics of green jobs, which they portray as hype. Here we shall debunk these debunkers and show why many of the so-called myths about green energy jobs are themselves false. Sure, there's a lot of hype with many companies wanting to be on the green bandwagon. The concept of green jobs can indeed mean almost anything, although renewable energy jobs are much less vague. By most definitions, these jobs include anything relating to renewable energy, as well as energy conservation, efficiency, storage, and transmission. If we speak of clean energy, definitions do get more slippery, as this can include jobs in the nuclear industry, given nuclear power's lack of CO2 emissions. The possibility of energy independence may be unfeasible, and it may even be undesirable economically but it sure would be nice to rely less on imported oil and diversify into more renewable, like wind and solar, and more energy efficiency, all of which leads to more jobs. By increasing the diversity of our energy supplies, we lower the $400 billion we now pay for imported oil and promote national security. If new nuclear power stations are constructed, jobs are also likely to grow in the nuclear sector, too. Some, like Bill Gates, think that many nuclear reactors about the size of a hot tub that could supply power to a small city could be particularly promising, as they lack nearly all the problems of existing reactors. Currently, China produces the majority of solar panels in the world, with trade benefiting especially from lower paid workers and the value of their currency. But even if the U.S. should buy solar panels and wind turbines from the cheapest suppliers abroad, a large proportion of the total jobs connected with renewable energy relate to installation, maintenance, sales, and research in the U.S. More importantly, deployment of renewable energy sources builds critical infrastructure, be it hydropower or solar plants or wind farms. Once built, these installations provide energy at low cost, since the fuel is free. In contrast, the cost of imported oil can fluctuate wildly and hold our nation hostage to the whims of foreign leaders and uncertain political and economic developments. Nuclear and fossil fuel industries have many subsidies, so why not do the same for renewable energy? But subsidies should be chosen with care, or they can have unfortunate effects, which is likely to be the case when the government picks the winners and losers among various technologies. One useful type of subsidy adopted in many countries is to require the utilities to buy certain percent of their electricity from renewables. More renewable energy R&D is another wise subsidy urged by Bill Gates and DuPont CEO Chad Holliday. They contrast the 5 to 15 percent R&D spent by information technology and pharmaceutical industry with the paltry 0.25 percent that U.S. energy companies now invest. Gates and Holliday note that energy research is different from that in other areas and that only government is likely to want to invest in this area, which has much longer time horizons and uncertain risks and rewards.
One technological advance associated with renewable energy that is more of a job killer than a job creator is the use of smart meters. These allow the electric grid to automatically read your electric meter and even turn off appliances at peak demand times so as to conserve energy. Smart meters make the job of manual meter reading unnecessary and the numbers of those jobs that are lost would be greater than the number created in making and installing the smart meters. However, the improved technology is expected to lead to new devices such as controllable refrigeration, which adds jobs in the economy. In the process, we would be using energy more efficiently, and those unemployed meter readers could be retrained. This development is likely to lead to a more productive society, just as with the mechanization of agriculture and industry because technology, when used properly, always leads to greater productivity. The U.S. Conference of Mayors projects that renewable energy jobs should grow by 1.7 million, or 66 percent, during the next 20 years, with the greatest growth being in power generation, engineering, legal, research, and consulting areas. Many forms of renewable energy now rest on well-established technology. Thus, wind now accounts for the largest share of new electricity generation in the U.S. Although renewable energy technology is mature, it is also continually being refined, for example, by improving the efficiency of solar cells. The outcome of such developments will determine the most promising directions for the future. Many people believe renewable energy can never supply more than a small fraction of our energy needs, given its variability. But developments in solar thermal technology combined with storage now make it possible to generate solar electricity day and night. In fact, several recent studies show that it is feasible to produce all our energy from renewables. A trade-off between economics and environmental concerns are one reason for higher energy costs. But market forces or the need to balance economic and security concerns are the main cost driver. It is likely that energy costs will rise all on their own, whether we like it or not, as supplies of fossil fuels fall due to increasing scarcity and greater competition from other nations. Taking a very short-term perspective would mean we stick with what is cheapest at the moment and neglect investments in the future. Consider the Chinese Three Georges Dam and Power Plant, which will have taken 17 years to build, more than six times as long as new coal-fired plants. But it would be ridiculous to regard the lack of power during the long construction time of a hydro plant as a negative for the economy when upon its completion it provides free non-polluting energy equivalent to 26 large nuclear power plants for many decades.